My name is Ruri Emmet. Kima Tima Fafu. Lionel Davis. I'm a resident artist at Great Moon Studios. I am an artist and I used to be a committee member of the Great Moor Studios. Great Moor is a sister to an organization titled Tupelo. Tupelo means to teach by example, it's a Sutu word. And Tupelo was started by the late Bill Ainsley and the artist David Kolwani in 1985. Initially, the arts establishment did not take Tupelo seriously. We were just a kind of fly-by-night organization trying to do things. Through the years, they've, they've realized, the arts establishment in South Africa have realized the, the, the wealth, the strength, of both Great Moon Studios and Tupelo. And over the years, we have had many graduates that had just graduated from Michaelis coming here to further their understanding and the making of art. Because after you come from university, you are at a loss. Where do you go to? You need looking for somebody to help you too, to support you, not financially, but emotionally. And a number of these artists that have made their name came from CAP, the Community Arts Project, who has unfortunately closed down. And there was no home for them. They come from poor communities, there, are, there is no such thing as private personal space. They didn't have studios. But with the opening of the Great Moor Studios, they had a home to come to. Tupelo works from Great Moor Studios. There is, as I said, this wonderful relationship between these two organizations. There have been a number of workshops, Tupelo workshops, right here in this, in this Great Moor Studios. And I have been fortunate enough to be, to have been part of these workshops. And the idea is that we, who had been to the Tupelo workshops, who understand the dynamic, how do people from very different backgrounds get together how do they begin to understand each other? Well, I started mainly as a painter because of my dad is a watercolorist and I got mostly of my skill, of my knowledge from my dad and also the background, the friends that my dad have, and he had, uh, because he studied at uh, Rockstrift, so he's got artists like um, Helen Cibidi, or my Helen Cibidi and um, Dumisani, or even Jill Tripla, so they used to, I used to be around artists like that, so, and then I moved to Cape Town, that's where I started to focus on my practices as a painter. Well, like I said, my dad is a what is an artist, so he also used to come at Tupelo workshops in Cape Town or in Johannesburg when I was still young, when I was like 10, 15, I used to, when I was back at home, he used to be on, a, you know, telling me that he's coming for Tupelo workshop for three months, and so I'm, I was aware of Great Moor when I was still very young, from a young age. I said I've been at Great Moor for, for almost three years now, and as of this year, um, fairly recently, I've been nominated as a, one of the Tupelo board members um, for Tupelo Cape Town. So the workshops that are held um, 
at create more studios and also at different locations around South Africa um, where you know artists can come and create in a dedicated sort of incubator space um, that allows for collaboration and sort of interaction with, with different uh, practitioners. So I perform as a character that I've been developing and constructing over the, the past couple of years um, called the Cape Color Man. And in the history of painting, um, Western art painting, uh, the Color Man was the, you know, the unsung hero in the, the old master studio. So the Color Man would produce pigments and paints for the, the master to then use in his, in his work. Um, but we don't hear about, you know, these figures. So I saw this, this term in a book and it, it made sense for me in, as like a visual pun, um, as a play on the term colored, uh, colored man. So the work then starts to grapple with identity and representation um, and also gaps in representation. So performing as this character, I paint my skin um, in the colors of the South African national flag. And in that process, um, my identity is um, hidden or masked but um, there's remnants or codes of specific uh, occupations like, you know, a worker or laborer's pants and boots or the activities that I do as this character, um, you know, breaking stones, painting walls, things that are very much um, menial or manual labor uh, and shifting that to become like a fine art uh, practice. I do that um, and I also paint, you know, just static conventional images, uh, but I build up the surfaces uh, so that they almost become sculptural and it almost looks like a relief sculpture of some sort um, so that the paintings also start to come to life. Um, yeah, so they allude to the performance of painting and or just pictures. I started working with this hand um, embroidery and working with two women and I feel like there's a bit of feminine side of it and also as much as I like to have a, some muscularity in it <laughs> but um, this the message, the, the, the story that I'm t talking about because I'm talking about um, empowering women and um, because the last piece that I did I called it the voiceless woman and that piece that I did, it was more to inspire women, who, talking about the mar a woman who is uh, just got married, the newlywed, and um, in the Kosa society, in the Kosa culture, if you just got married, do you you have to be accepted to your husband, you know? So and there's certain stuff that you have to do, like sitting behind the door, and <clears throat> so I, when I look at that, I felt like I should write a story about that because. Most of those women who got, just got married, they feel like they do have a voice, but they just got married and they can't do much than just to be in the house and to be a housewife, you know. So when I tell hear those stories, I, I paint and I also embroider, hand embroider my work to tell, to empower the other women and to st strengthen them with my message, embroidery. I'm not so aware of, of the colors that I... I choose, but I like to think um, I'm inspired by nature. I love plants and I love um, the greenery. That's why you will see my work mostly if you look at Kimba Timafafi's work. I always have background of lush greenery and so I'm always surrounded by that. I like to stay in a place like uh, I stayed in Stellenbosch and then staying in Stellenbosch there's a lot of um, plantation and forest and being in the mountains and so that inspired my work also I like earthy colors I like to be in earth I, I was actually wondering if I had to move to a place whereby it's cold maybe in Europe how will I respond to that you know how my work gonna change and my colors but my colors are mostly inspired by nature and the earth African climax yes so these works I'm producing for a competition um, which is the Emerging Painters Award which I've made the top 24 and it's happening in Harare uh, in Zimbabwe. 
So I'm producing a series of three works with this floral print in the background. And it's something that's, you know, considered intrinsically South African. A lot of people can identify it immediately because um, it's like it covers mattresses and stuff like that. Uh, one thing that I also learned from being a great mock the artists who've been a great more and who've made it big in the art world, they still come and share their ideas and have workshops with art, emerging artists. So one day if I finish here at Great Moor after my three years residency, I, I will still come and have workshops here and give workshops in either in painting or textile. Or I, I feel like as an artist, you have to give to the community than just... Um, Stay on your, for yourself. And it is your duty to find a way to bring people together. And we at Great Moor are instrumental in helping to make this a better world to live in. Mm -hmm.